You have probably heard that the Greeks were able to memorize huge long speeches using only the power of their imaginations. And you might be surprised to hear that this is 100% real and something that people even practice today. And studying what these people do actually highlights some amazing things about how our brains and minds work. Now the simplest way to illustrate how powerful these Greek memory tools are is to show what a standard challenge is and how it compares to the average person's memory. A standard challenge for a master of memory is to memorize a deck of cards as it is flicked in front of their eyes. So this is 52 items passed quickly in front of their brains. Now, most people's capacity to memorize caps off at about nine items. Now, the way you test this is by using a test called the digit test. You give people a list of numbers. There's three numbers, and there's four numbers, five numbers, six numbers, seven numbers, eight numbers, nine numbers. And they're supposed to memorize that first line of three numbers, then take a couple of seconds, and then recite those numbers. They move down then to the four numbers, then to the five numbers, and do the same thing. Eventually, when they reach six, seven, eight, and nine, they will not be able to get all of the numbers. They will hit their limit. Now, what we are testing here is your verbal working memory, because when most people are trying to memorize things, they're saying to themselves 10, 20, 14, 12, 16, whatever it is. They're listing these things out using words and trying to install it into their minds so that they recite the correct order of words. Now, if you have a really good working memory, you will only start to stall at around about eight or nine numbers. If yours is quite poor, you'll actually start to find it hard at about five or six. Now, you can try this exercise right now yourself to see what you get, to see how powerful your mind is. It's important to note that having a high IQ will help you with this. In fact, this is a very good rough estimate of your IQ. If you were able to recall eight or nine numbers, you probably have a high IQ, my friend. Now, if you do this test and you don't get nine and say, oh no, I don't have a blistering IQ, there's no hope for me. There's no need to fret. In fact, this exercise itself illustrates a fascinating question about our intelligence and our capacity. Because nine items is the blistering top of IQ. We're talking close to Mensa level IQ, essentially the highest performers in the world. And nine is nothing compared to 52 items in a deck of cards. How come these professional memorizers can take things to such a higher level? Elite memorizers all use the power of their visual imagination. They switch the paradigm of their thinking. They don't list out 52 things by just spitting out words. Instead, they switch on their visual part of their minds and they create a palace, a sequence, a system, a tool of imaginative memory to assist them in capturing information. This allows them to blast past the limits of verbal thinking. For example, in our card challenge, each and every card in the deck of cards has this associated image with it. So for example, the Ace of Spades, I would associate it perhaps with Lemmy from Motorhead because he has the Ace of Spades. The Queen of Hearts could be Sidney Sweeney and the Prince of Clubs could be Conor McGregor and so on. And you do this for the whole deck, all 52. Now, when you take this deck of cards and you randomly shuffle it and then move it past your mind really quickly. So look through the cards step by step really quickly. What will happen then is as a card shows up, the association that you've preloaded in your mind will pop up in your head and you need to sequence them inside an imagined journey or space. So for example, a step by step journey throughout your house, going from one room to the other, or a step by step journey down to the shop in your road where you're going past the house and then a gate and then a tree or something like this because this allows you to create a mathematical sequence. So you'd need a journey that has 52 steps inside of it. This is known as chunking. You're creating chunks in a journey that you can use almost as like memory slots. Your IQ, your verbal imagination looked like it was limited to nine memory spots if you're very, very smart. But here we're able to actually expand the amount of memory slots. And so how it works is as you imagine this journey, you drop these characters off, which allows you to quickly recite them again in order at the end. So for example, the start is Lemmy sitting on the couch, grumbling and smoking a cigarette in the living room. You turn to leave the living room and standing at the door is Sydney Sweeney giggling and she opens the door for you or something like this. And then when you open the door, you enter into the kitchen and Conor McGregor is standing there and he's got his hands up ready to fight. And this goes to show you the enhanced power of your imagination because you're able to do this really quickly. These guys do this in 40 seconds. That's less than one card every single second that they're just firing through. And the associations imprint themselves so well that you can just zip through your house and smack up all these characters and then recite it very quickly at the end. 
Now, there's some absolutely amazing things about this. It seems that there is no real upper limit to how much information you can store in this way. You're Memory is incredible when you use your imagination. Memory champions have done marathon sessions where they use these imagination techniques and just recite literally thousands of ideas, thousands of items. And usually their limit is reached not because their imagination can't do it, because their IQ or something puts a limit. It's usually just they just get tired. They can't sit there for two to three hours and recite all this stuff without amphetamines or cocaine or something like this, because, you know, your brain runs out of chemicals. Furthermore, this does open up some fascinating questions about the capacity of your imagination. It seems like your imagination and your visual powers are able to surpass the limits of your IQ. Now, of course, there's a caveat to this. I'm sure having a high IQ will help you with your visual thinking, but it still does go to show that there's something about the visual paradigm that outpaces the limits of raw brain power. There's something inherently useful about the visual imagination that the verbal thinking cannot really grasp. So if you want, you can try this yourself. If you have a deck of cards nearby, give it a whack. Associate each card with a character, with some type of image, and see if you can rip through it and memorize them all very quick. 